You're seated on the throne. Nothing can stand against you. Lord, and who is like the Lord? Strong in battle. Who is like the Lord? Mighty to save. Who is like the Lord? King forever. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. And who is like the Lord? Strong in battle. Who is like the Lord? Mighty to save. And who is like the Lord? King forever. Jesus reigns. You reign in all the earth, you reign in all the heavens, you're holy. You're seated on the throne, nothing can stand against you, you're holy, yeah. You reign in all the earth, you reign in all the heavens, you're holy. You're seated on the throne, nothing can stand against you, Lord. Bless him, O oh my soul, and remember who he is. He mends the broken heart and protects the innocent. His character is flawless. His word is perfect truth. His presence is our remedy. So open up the gate and wisdom power and mercy his glory stands alone adorned through all eternity his character is flawless his word is perfect truth his presence is our remedy so open up the gates and the gate and let the King of glory in. We open up the gate Yeah. 
sing we worship we worship you respond we worship you respond we worship you respond with the We worship you, respond with open heavens. Oh, we praise your name, mighty God, wonderful. You are a good God. Sing us out. We worship you, respond. We worship you, respond. We worship you, respond. We worship you, respond with open heavens. We worship you, respond. We worship you, respond. We worship you, respond. Spirit and Holy Spirit come rest on us you're all we want you're all we want and Holy Spirit come rest on us you're all we want you're all we want and Holy Set heaven on it. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. So calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Sing as the Spirit. And as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Rest on us, and as the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on fire, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come and rest on us. Come and rest on us. So calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Yeah. Sing Holy Spirit. 
Spirit, come rest. And Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. And Holy Spirit, come rest on us. So calm down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Seen like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. in love and your soul to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forevermore forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, 
worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. I will worship Your holy name. I will worship Your. Worship your holy name. God, we exalt your name this morning. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and just be with you, Father. When all fails, God, when we come to the end of our days, Lord, one thing remained, and that was you and your love, Father God. God, we pray that you would open our hearts this morning to hear your word, Lord, that it would fall on good soil this morning. We praise you in your name. Amen. And amen. Well, can we all put our hands together and a great big warm welcome to our worship team. They always do such an amazing job. Thank you. Well, test, test my thing. Okay, good. First of all, how many lovely ladies showed up yesterday for there was about 60 women for the tea party. It was amazing. So for all of you that showed up, great job. And Dee always does a fantastic job with putting those special events up. That's part of Get Up Girls. If you're wondering what that event was about, it was Get Up Girls. So get involved. Okay. Well, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers and mothers-to-be. Today is your day. When you came in today, you probably would have gotten a flower or chocolates. If you did not, please make sure you grab one on your way out. All right. Here are the announcements for today. Connection cards. If you are new with us today, even you new moms, make sure you fill that out and then take it out to the Welcome Center and they actually have a gift, a gift for you to receive today on top of your chocolates and flowers. And for those of you that are regular parishioners here, please put praises on there. If something good's happened to you in the last week, write that down. The worship team and the prayer team love to actually every week pray on something that's amazing that's happened in your life where God has actually been working in your life. So make sure you fill that out. Life groups kick off this week. Uh, check the website or in the back. Arthrex, there's actually sign-up cards that you can actually sign up. There's one almost every night. So please, sign up or get involved. It's really important to call church home, not only on Sundays here, but also during the week for you can connect. My phone will not stay lit up, so hold on. Dang it. <laughs> okay, next announcement. Um, Feed My Starving Children, that's coming up May 19th, and there's still plenty of room, guys and gals. Sign up for that. That's a great event that you can get involved, and um, there's a little bit of competition, so it's, it's a healthy competition, so I'm told, right, Keith? <laughs> uh, next thing is Military Appreciation Month. Please drop off non-perishable items back in the boxes. These are veterans that have served our country and served what we get to call freedom here today, so please, Bring something, drop it in the box for those people. And last but not least is save the date. July 25th through the 28th from 9 a.m. to noon. That is going to be our summer VBS, Vocational Bible Study. So make sure that you guys get registered for that. And without further ado, let's go ahead and watch the bumper for Miss D to deliver the sermon today. So I'm going to be in the hospital. 
hospital with a heart attack and you're going to be sorry because you pranked me? Yes! <laughs> so I just want everybody to know <laughs> that I just sent plays <laughs> into AutoZone <laughs> to get blinker <laughs> to get blinker fluid. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think we're missing just a smidge of that. So what happened was she went, she sent her daughter in for lighter fluid. Or no, not lighter fluid. I'm sorry. Now I can't even tell a joke. Keith knows this about me. I've already just ruined the whole thing. Anyway, she basically sends her daughter in for something that does not exist. That's why the woman can't stop laughing. And I wanted to share it with you guys because I love to laugh. You have to laugh if you're a mom, right? You got to laugh. Am I, am I a little weird here? Should I adjust this? We're good to go? Okay. All right, guys. Sorry. Good morning, everyone. For those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet and online, my name is Deep Havia, and I am with the Get Up Girl Women's Ministry here at Christ Church. I'm, I'm doing this thing. Is it my hair? Something weird happening here. Girl problems. Oh, yes. I'll put it over my ear. There we go. All right. Okay, welcome everyone, um, and welcome to those online. We love you guys, our family and friends. Be sure to comment. We love to know where you're tuning in from, and we just love hearing from you as well. So, um, so listen up. Today, we're going to be talking about trusting in the great I am, and it's really cool how this happens because really God was really quick to remind me, uh, first and foremost, that um, you know sometimes my 13-year-old, our youngest son at home, he struggles a little bit with messages as well. And uh, not with messages like this, but like maybe doing an English uh, report or something, trying to come up with ideas for that. And I thought, you know what, I'm no different when I'm trying to think of something to do for a message. And it was really cool because I got to meet with my dear friend Carrie. A lot of you know she is the director over at Promised Land. And we started talking about trusting in God and what that really, really looks like. And um, I thought, ding, 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 that's what we're going to talk about today. And as I was pulling scriptures together and pulling down thoughts and all kinds of things, I thought, okay, Lord, I've got all this stuff, but now what, right? Because my heart always, if I ever get the opportunity to stand up here in front of you all, is truly just to deliver exactly what God wants me to. I don't want it to be about D. I don't want it to be about anything other than what he has for each one of you today. And that's truly my heart. So every time I come up here, I pray, Lord God, remove the things that don't need to be included and add the things that do. And, um, and he's so faithful with that. And he basically took all the thoughts and the conversations that, I, that we had, and he, I, I Put, he put it into what I like to call going back to my corporate days, right? Into a beautiful storyboard. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And I, and I hope you guys really, if you don't get anything today, if you get one little nugget would be absolutely amazing because that'll be straight from God to you, okay? So I um, just wanted to let you all know too for Mother's Day, I have to wish my mother a, a mother, happy Mother's Day of today. I know she's watching online and I got to celebrate early with her along with a lot of you and my sister at the tea event last night was so beautiful and I just wanted to again thank everyone that was involved in that. It takes a lot of people to make those things happen. So thank you. It was a beautiful time. All right and of course I have to thank the, the ones that made me a mom and I've been a mom now for 35, over 35 years to seven amazing boys and also my eight grand, beautiful grandkids. So I should have a picture to share, but I thought it's not going to be fair for me to share that today since y'all didn't get to share yours. So <laughs> we'll do it another time. Okay, so we're going to move on here. Um, trusting in the great I am. So there's so much to be said for that, right? So I think about even as me being a mom for the past 35 years, a lot has changed in our world. Wouldn't you agree? There's been so many changes, right? I mean, think about it. Back in the 50s, and this is a decade before I came along, but still, back in the 50s, what were probably some of the greatest concerns? Maybe Elvis Presley swiveling his hips to some rock and roll. Maybe somebody taking a drag of a cigarette out behind the school, right? Those were really big deals back in the day, right? Guys, the world has changed greatly. It has changed greatly. I wish that was all the problems that we had to worry about when it comes to our kids and our grandkids, right? 
Think about it. Today, everybody has anxiety. I mean, it is like unprecedented the numbers of people that are diagnosed with anxiety disorders, right? We see that everywhere. Um, we see the ease of drug availability. Let me tell you, I did jury duty since January downtown, and it is just out in the open. You can literally exchange uh, drugs and money right in front of anyone and everyone, and nobody blinks an eye anymore. That's how crazy it is, right? It's just absolutely nuts. Um, of course, we have the issues of normalizing certain sex issues. We have all the social issues, all the government, all the school issues, all the stuff, right, that makes us concerned for our children or our grandchildren. But the thing that's cool is as much as the world has changed, and rapidly, by the way, because I personally no seems to have noticed even more so the past couple of years, we have a God that never changes. And I am so personally grateful for that. Because I don't know where we would be if we had a God like the government or like anything else that changes with every whim, that changes with every new idea, changes with every new fad. Can you imagine if we served a God that did that? Would any of us even have a chance? I'm so grateful we have a God that doesn't change. And guys, listen, we can trust him with our children. We can absolutely trust him with our children. And my favorite saying of all time, I always say it, while we still have breath, there is always time. There's always time to save one more. There's always time to add to the numbers of heaven. And that's what we as believers should be about, amen? Adding to the numbers of heaven, absolutely. So before we dive in, guys, would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we are so, so thankful for, for this beautiful day, and we thank you for every mother represented, and we pray for those who are longing for their mothers today, for whatever reason that might be. We thank you, Lord, that you are the perfect parent, Father, and that your very spirit represents the qualities of both a loving father and a nurturing mother. And while things may not always be perfect in the land of parenthood, Lord, we know that through you, all things can be made new and all things are possible, Lord, because you give us strength. May our spiritual ears be open to hear what you would speak to our hearts today, Lord. Clear the clutter out of our minds. Clear the worry out of our minds. And help us to simply just take a deep breath today and breathe in all that you would have for each one of us today, your children. It is in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. I love that word. And by the way, since we're talking about trusting in God today, did you know that amen comes from Hebrew amen, which really just means uh, certainty, or the word verily, or truth. And I thought that was, that's so perfect, because that's what we're talking about today. So in studying for today's message, I wanted to give you guys the conclusion up front. You okay with that? Kind of like those of you that like to read books and kind of like to skim through to the back and see what's going to happen. To, tr to truly trust God, one must fear him. One must fear him. And that might not be a new message for you. That might not be an aha for you, and that's okay. Because again, just as I said earlier, I hope you can take away one nugget from today. To truly trust him, we must fear him. To revere who he is and what he is capable of, because we are talking, guys, about a God. If he wanted, at this very moment, and I hope he doesn't, but he can make the whole world tremble. He can make the entire world tremble, just like that, right? That's who he is. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, fearing God, I consider myself a God-fearing Christian. I already do that. What's the point? What's the point? I've been a Christian for a long time. Do yeah, I can do this. But I love how having reverence for God actually aligns with when Jesus tells us how to pray. You guys know that our Father who art in heaven, any, any prior previous Catholics in here? Yeah, myself included, yes. And our Father who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed. Have you ever thought of that word much? Do you know what it means? It means holy. It means consecrated. It means to be honored, and it means to be revered. To be revered, right? To be, it's a holy fear, to be revered. Revering God and knowing who we are truly putting our trust in, we can trust him. We can. See, reverence is described as a profound respect and love, and when you have a reverent attitude towards God, you honor him. You express your attitude to him. So it's like, I think of it like that perpetual heart of thanksgiving. You know, like I love to hike, I love to walk, because I love nature. 
I remember driving through Colorado once just crying, a good cry, because I looked around and saw all the beauty, and I thought, if somebody doesn't believe in God, all they got to do is drive around and check out what he's created. It's just incredible. He is an amazing God. So a heart of perpetual thanksgiving and obey his commandments. That's important, right? He says if we love him, we will what? We will obey him, just like our kids. We know our kids truly love us and listen to us if they obey us, right? It's no different. It's no different. And reverence is connected to the fear of the Lord, which could encompass more than just a simple fear. So theologian Robert Strimple said, there is a convergence of awe, reverence, adoration, honor, worship, confidence, thankfulness, love, and yes, fear. You see, as mothers and fathers and parents and even just loved ones, right? Um, but mostly as believers, guys, we are really dependent upon our faith in God. We really are. I mean, if you shook everything out and that's all we have left, we're dependent upon that when it comes to the fate of those that we love and that we care about. And maybe it's not a child. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's an aging parent. Maybe it's a sick family member or friend, right? Whatever it might be. Regardless, we are dependent on him. We really, we truly are. And we can go to him in prayer. That's the best part. We don't have to just go to him in prayer for that. We can praise him all the day long. But we have a God that we can trust and we can go to in prayer. And here's the thing. Here's a side note. I, want to sh I just felt that God really put this on my heart because Satan is such a great deceiver in this time. And I, I really believe in, in a lot of ways the church and Christians that have been Christians for a long time have, have kind of silently gone into this lull. This little sleep, right? That, that was the whole point of starting to get up, girl. Wake up. We got some work to do. We're not done yet, right? We are not done. But listen to this. It's important to keep a humble heart, and I'm going to tell you why. Whether your child is doing what you think is the worst of the worst, what could that be? He's lying. She's lying. He's cheating. He's drugging. He's drinking. Whatever bad looks like to you. And then you got the kid over here. Oh, look at Johnny. He's making the great grades, and now he's got a great job, and now he's got a great wife and a great house and a nice car. Can I just tell you something? We need to be humble, and we never need to stop praying for our kids. You know why? Because these two could still have the same destination. Did you know that? They could still have the same destination. But we serve a great God, and he hears us, and he loves us, and he hears our prayers. And we can pray for our kids. We can pray for them. Anybody have a prodigal son or daughter? You don't have to raise your hand, but I will because I'm honest. And listen, God is going to rescue my son. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. He's going to bring him back to the faith that he grew up in. Stand on God's promises. He is a great God. He is the great I am, and he loves you. Isaiah 12, 2 tells us, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Again, only God can save us. Only God can save our children or our loved ones. Speaking of the great I am, most of you are already familiar with I am being one of God's names or references throughout Scripture, right? I am. Think about it. I am. There's not much to that, right? But you know what? It commands confidence. It commands um, being in charge and all-knowing. And because we know that our God is a God of humility, it's, it's, not, a, uh, it's not like he's, he's trying to you know, be egotistical or anything like that. It's just mere fact. It's just factual. He's God, and I am not. That's it. No matter what. End of story. And did you know that the term I am referenced as God and throughout scriptures is actually mentioned like 300 times? You guys know I like to throw those numbers out. 300 times. There's a reason for it. If God is repeating it over and over and over, it must be important, right? I think it's something we listen to. From Exodus we read, Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I shall say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent you. Can you imagine hearing that? I imagine me hearing that for the first time, the Lord saying to me, I am. I am who I am. Oh, okay. All right. Can you imagine that? I am. That's confidence. That's boldness. That's a God who knows exactly who he is. And he is the God of the Bible. He is the great and mighty I am. He is not the God 
of the past. He's not the God of the future. He's not restrained by time. He's the great and sovereign I am. And moving towards the New Testament, we see Jesus. So we see Jesus. He's the carpenter's son. He's the rabbi. He's the teacher. We know Jesus. He's flesh and blood. He's flesh and blood. And Jesus makes the same exact claim as God. Did you know that? As God did to Moses when he said, I am. Jesus says the same thing. Listen up. John 8, 56, 58, your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it and was glad. And the people said, they're saying this to Jesus, you aren't even 50 years old. How can you say you have seen Abraham? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was even born, I am. I am. Jesus said it. And that is so cool to me. I love that because listen, when you're looking back, in the scriptures, at that, when he was talking, you know, to Moses, right? Moses being there in the Old Testament and God saying who he was, and you move forward, and now it's Jesus, right? The Son, God in the flesh, basically, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all in one. That is incredible. That deserves awe. That deserves reverence. I am. And Jesus says that he is the great I am. Confidence all knowing there is no doubt who he claims to be. And guys, we can trust the great I am. We can absolutely trust him with our desires. We can trust him with our disappointments. If you're a parent, my gosh, you've had some disappointments. It's true. And guess what? We disappointed our parents too. <laughs> and that's okay. That's quite all right, right? Because he is a big God. He hears our prayers. He hears our petitions. He is waiting for us every day. Every day we wake up, he's ready for us. There's a quote by C.S. Lewis, and probably most of you are aware of him or know him, but if you don't, he was an English author back in the day, and probably 30s to the 60s, somewhere in there. He actually was a BBC broadcaster uh, back in World War I, and he was an atheist even up until he converted to Christianity in his 30s. Um, and you're going to remember some of the things he wrote, screw tape letters, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, uh, and also, what was the other one? Chronicles of Narnia. You'll know that one because we've seen the movie, right? So C.S. Lewis said, I pray because I cannot help myself. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time. Waking and sleeping, it doesn't change God. It changes me. And I really love that quote because I'm sure like many of you, you can relate to that. And I'll be honest, this is the honest to God's truth. Praying to me is really just a continuing conversation with God. That's all it is to me. I talk to him all day long. From the time I get up, Lord God, please push me out of this bed, please, Lord. Right? It starts right when I get up in the morning and right when I lay down at night. I, I talk to him all day. It is like air to me, you guys. That's how critical praying to God is for me. It is. And maybe I have a little bit more to pray for. I don't know. But it is part of my life, and that's okay. I'm, I'm so grateful I have God for that, right? We all have him for that. Listen, many of you know the story of Jesus raising the little girl from the dead, right? You've heard that story. Um, so that was Jairus, uh, Jairus uh, Jairus' daughter, and he was a synagogue leader back in the day. And what had happened was he had wanted Jesus to come and heal his daughter, and Jesus was busy. Y'all remember the lady who had the issue with the blood, and she had touched his hem, and he healed her. Well, while he was taking time doing that, after he had heard that Jairus needed him to come out, the little girl had passed, as the world would deem the little girl passed, right? So let me read this to you. Mark 5, 35, 42, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Don't bother Jesus right? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, guys. Just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. That's what they did back then. They paid people to do that, by the way. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. Can you imagine laughing at Jesus now if they, they really knew who he, who he was? After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. And I'm, side note again, I like to do these little rabbit trails. I love how Jesus only allowed those in that mattered. 
at that moment, those that had great faith, those that were there out of desperation, those that actually believed in him. I love that he did that. And I only share that with you because, listen, it goes for all of us. Don't worry about the mockers in your life. Don't worry about those that talk behind your back. If you're in ministry, you got a big old target on your back. You're going to be talked about. But it doesn't matter at the end of the day. All that matters is Jesus, right? That's all that matters and what he can do. We don't have to worry about that stuff. Okay, I'm back from my rabbit trail. All right? And it goes on to say, He took her by the hand and said to her, Talit the kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. And that's exactly the scripture we use for get up, girl, right? This is, um, immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. And at this, they, they were completely astonished. Amazing. I love that. So don't be afraid. Just believe, Jesus said. See, we can trust him, especially in the impossible. That's where God's glory shines the greatest, right? When we have just absolutely been spent of all of our human energy and our knowledge and are trying to figure everything out, Guess what God does? He just swoops in and says, I got this. Do you trust me? I got this. I can do it. I can do it. God has power over life and death. So listen, I know there's a lot of people that we're praying for that have some recent diagnosis. But you know what? We remember, too, that God numbers our days. Amen? We don't have to worry about those diagnoses. We just keep plugging away, and we keep doing the thing, and we keep loving him and obeying him, and he will direct our path. I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to throw it in right now, so this must be one of those moments. My dad was diagnosed with stage 4 melanoma 14 years ago. He was told he would have to get extreme surgery, which he did. He did not go through the chemo. He did not want to do it because he said, I don't want to go out that way. If it's my time, I trust in God. And do you know that God completely healed him? And my dad is still alive and breathing today with no sign of cancer at all. After 14 years, he is a good God. He's so faithful. And I don't say that to to take lightly, that sometimes it doesn't happen here. And that's okay, too. You know why? Because in my mind, God showed me a long time ago, the ultimate healing as believers is in heaven for all eternity. That's the ultimate healing. We can't lose, guys. We cannot lose, whether it be here or someday in heaven. We can't lose, okay? So I just, there it was. That was a little addition. I didn't mean to add, but clearly God wanted me to share that. So Psalm 37, 4, 5 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. And I'll be honest, I used to really focus a lot on that part. He will give you the desires of your heart. And, I, and not so much in a selfish way, but in all honesty, I thought, no, Lord, you know what? I, I, I kind of got that other stuff down. I've been a believer for a while. I, you know, the desires of, uh, of my heart, yeah, I, I think you're going to answer my prayers, Lord, because... Um, you know, I'm, I do all the right things. I try to, right? I'm a good person. I, I say the right things. If I'm enough, Lord, surely you're going to answer prayers as I want them answered. We might not say it out loud. It sounds funny to say out loud, but I know that I've, I've thought it for sure, right? But you know what God says? He says, I am enough. He is enough, not me. He is enough. He is enough. And I love that he shares that with us. So truth or trust in the dictionary says firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. But this is my favorite definition. It says acceptance of the truth of a statement without evidence or investigation. I'm going to say it one more time. Acceptance of the truth of a statement without evidence or investigation. And that sounds a lot like faith, doesn't it? Sounds a lot like faith without knowing. Guys, it's the unknown that is our greatest fear, probably. Think about it. When we don't know, what do we do as moms, as dads, as friends, as family? What do we do? We worry. We tiptoe. We have anxiety. We do all those things because it's the fear of the unknown that keeps us frozen many times, right? But you know what? We serve the God of the unknown. 
And he already knows our future in him. He already knows where we're going. So why do we fear so much, right? Why do we fear? There's an image. i got to break this up sometimes with the serious talk with the little funny. So there's a wisdom image. Do we have it, Tim? There it is. Parenting isn't stressful at all. Look at Jessica, the young, tender age of 27. All right? Wisdom. Wisdom. Is it then safe to say that trusting God begins with true reverence or fear of the Lord, which begins with wisdom, right? Psalm 111.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Wisdom, absolutely necessary to parent, right? We know that. James 1.5 tells us, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. And we know that in the Old Testament, King Solomon, right, he was, he was not only the richest, but you know, he was the wisest man on the earth. And it says in the scripture that he asked God for a heart of wisdom. And I thought that was so cool because again, we're going to do the comparison. You move forward to the New Testament and guess what? It says in the New Testament, let me get to my little part here where it's talking about it. Yes, it was Paul. Paul stated in Colossians to the church there, he said that, um, that Jesus actually was, is the one that is the beholder of wisdom itself. For he says that all wisdom and knowledge were hidden within Christ. And think about that. I love that because, again, you go back to the Old Testament. Solomon's asking for wisdom from the heart. And then you have Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right, here on earth. And he is the beholder of all wisdom. It's just amazing. I love that. And listen, it's, it's good. It's, it's good to seek wisdom from the godly. It says that in the word, right, from the wise. And I hope that y'all have somebody that you can do that with, that you trust, right? But never, ever, ever let it replace going to God first, you know? And, and I'm, not, I'm not preaching at you. I, trust me. I, especially women. I don't know what it is about us girls, but, boy, we are so quick to be on the horn, Right? Hey, I got this problem. And there's nothing wrong with that. But everything in moderation, right? You, don't, you also don't want to drain your friends, right? <laughs> Every little situation. And I just say that in jest, kind of, because the reality is God wants us to seek him first in all things. He says, seek me first, and all these other things are going to be added unto you. Seek me first, right? That's what he says. That's what he tells us. Seek and you shall find. That's what he tells us. We know that. Psalm 34, 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. So we have an image of rescue as well. And there it is. It's a little blurry, but that's super mom up there. That's super mom to the rescue, right? And he's not just the God of rescue. He's the God of restoration. And we all probably have some sort of rescue story, and that's awesome. That's going to be our testimony, right? And guess what? If you don't have one, that's okay, because we all have the same one. We were rescued by him to save us from the pits. That is the best rescue story I have ever heard in my life, and I am grateful for it. Psalm 115.11 says, You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. God is our help and our shield. He protects us. He protects our kids. He protects our loved ones. And I know there have been many times, especially as mom over the years, where I've truly had to trust God to protect my children for their very lives. I've had kids, like many of you, maybe in the hospitals. I've had kids that have been out doing things they shouldn't be doing. Um, you know, we think about it. Anytime we send our kids off for the first, right? Uh, first day of school, first day of college, uh, first time driving a car, you know, all those things. And then as they get older, what? We're still concerned for them. They're married. They got kids. They got grandkids. They got stresses. And oh, the sweet call that you get. Oh, mom, how did you ever do it? <laughs> oh. It's heavenly. It really, really is. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Yes. And I know it's hard to fathom. I personally wrestled with this thought a time or two. But after all these years of being a mom, I know within all of my heart for this to be true, that as much as we love our children, as much as we love them and, and probably say we would die for our kids, God, the Father, loves them even more. Even more, can we trust him with our kids? Can we trust him with our grandkids and not fret and worry every time we get a call or every time something happens? 
we can trust him. We can get some sleep at night, believe it or not. It's not always easy. And I've, I'm not the expert in that area, trust me. I still have some sleepless nights. I'm just being honest. But it's always a good reminder. We can trust in him. We can rest in him. And you may say, sure, that's easier said than done. That's easier said than done. But I know that God's word is true. And he says in his word, children are a gift from the Lord. And and that's from conception on, by the way. I know the world is trying to argue differently right now. But it is from conception on. That is a human being. That is a life that God created. Okay? That is a life that God created. And the best place our children could ever be, guys, is in the hands of God. The best place. And that might pierce That might pierce some of you today. It might. It might. And the reason being is because maybe you have lost children. And and that could be uh, because they were taken early from you, or it could even be by choice. And listen, I want to talk to those of you that have done it by choice. First of all, there is absolutely no condemnation. When you seek God and when you ask him and you repent, my gosh, he forgives you and he loves you. And those precious babies, guess all the babies, guess, guess where they are. They are awaiting in heaven. Don't ever feel guilty. Don't hang on to that. Let it go. Live a life of freedom that, died, that Jesus died on the cross to give you. Don't hang on to it. And for those of you that have lost your babes, your kids, right, way too young, before they're, they're supposed to go. And my dear Aunt Diane in Oklahoma, we just lost my cousin this past week. And I know her heart is just broken. She just lost her husband this past year as well. So my heart grieves for anyone here that has lost a child. Or maybe you've lost your mom, and Mother's Day is hard for you today because mom's not here. My heart breaks for you, but you know what? It also rejoices. It rejoices because I know you're going to be reunited with them one day. So hang on to that hope. Hang on to that truth. God is listening, and his heart breaks for you too. We can trust him. And listen, rescue is just the first part of that because we also have a God that can restore. Restore simply means to reinstate. There's a lot of R's here, so bear with me. Reinstate, replace, rehabilitate, right? To basically bring back. Again, I I mentioned earlier the whole prodigal son piece or the prodigal daughter piece, right? God, he is amazing. He is the God of restoration. And when we pray, we have to believe We have to believe, and we could be doing the prayer, the same prayer for years and years and years. Guys, I have been doing the same prayer for many, many years, but I don't doubt God for a second. I don't doubt that he's not going to come through. I am going to be persistent. I will never, ever stop praying for my children and for my loved ones. I won't do it. Again, while I still have breath, there's still time, right? And I love, love, love this song. Uh, It is well. We've done it here before. And I'm going to read their lines to you, unless I just feel like I need to sing it. But (laughs) it's it is well. Do you want me to sing it? (laughs) Far be it for me to not believe, even when my eyes can't see. And this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well with me. And it is well, you guys. It is well with my soul. That song just absolutely pierces me. And every time we sing it in here for worship, I just melt all over the place because I think about this all the time. All my worries, all my concerns, all my prayers for my kids, for my family, for my friends. We can have peace in the middle of all of it. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret right? We can trust him. It is well with our souls. So we have an image of protection. Protector of tiny humans. I love that. I think that is such a cute shirt. I might have to get that for my daughter-in-laws. Those are so, that's so adorable. Um, 
True reverence begins with protection. Proverbs 14, 26 says, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have refuge. Refuge is simply shelter, safety, security, sanctuary, and protection. That's all it is. That's all it is. Deuteronomy 6, 24 goes on to say, so the Lord commanded us to observe all these statues, statutes to fear the Lord, our God, for our good always and for our survival as it is today. We are so dependent on this, right? It is about survival even. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. The great I am. Do we fear him? Do we revere him, right? And then there's an image of peace, image of peace. I never know what to say when people ask me what my hobbies are. I mean, I'm a mom. I enjoy trips to the bathroom alone and silence. (laughs) Factual? Any young moms in the house? We know this is true, right? What happens when you go to the restroom? You start to see hands under the door. It's a good time, right? It's a good time. All right. True reverence for the Lord can also bring, just as I mentioned, peace. And I love this part. It is on my personal all-time list of pursuits. Peace. It is. I pursue peace. And, And the reason being is because I've had enough drama in my life to last a few, you know, series of Lifetime movies. I've said it before. It's not a brag. It's not a brag. I want peace. I want peace. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep in perfect uh, peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. And guys, we're not just talking about regular everyday kind of peace. We're talking perfect peace. Who doesn't want perfect peace? I want perfect peace. And the Israelites knew firsthand the importance of what happens, right, when we don't keep our thoughts fixed on him and when we don't trust him fully, right? We're, we're, when we're, we're not fearing him completely. And by the way, I don't think we mentioned it yet. I don't think we've mentioned it at all. But did you all know that fearing the Lord is actually a command in the scriptures? It's a command. Listen to De- Deuteronomy 6.1.2. These are the commands, the decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So to the Israelites, he's speaking. So that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you and so that you may enjoy long life. I want that. I want it, and I know we give the Israelites so much grief, 40 years doing the same old thing. How silly is that? Come on. I'm way past that 40-year mark, and I'm still doing some stuff, right? But that's why we need to be in the Word every day, day and night, so God can show us. He can direct us. He can remind us of all that is true and all that is good. And last but not least, guys, this is going to be a nice segue as we move into a time of communion. So we talked about the true reverence of fear of the Lord. It, gives, it also gives us to have fear of the Lord, life itself, not just here, but for all eternity. And I think we have a, a mom life image. Is that right, Tim? Gives us life. And we have hashtag mom life, right? So hashtag mom life, that is a legit thing right there. Proverbs 19.23 says, the fear of the Lord leads to life, and then one rests content, untouchable by trouble. Fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways, it says in Psalm 128. Fearing God is a vital ingredient to walking in God's ways. So the fear of God, we know it's not a bad thing. It gives perspective to all of life. We know that, right? He is eternal. I am temporal, right? He is perfect. I'm the sinner. He is almighty. I am the one that is weak. He is the judge. I am the one that is is accountable, right? The thing about it is through Jesus, We too have eternal life. We do have that opportunity, and I'm so grateful. A healthy respect for him is an unending reminder that we are always, always, always in his presence, and that is sacred. Do we take it seriously? Do we take it seriously that he says that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit? Meaning we are literally walking around with him every day, everywhere we go, every person we come in contact with. Do you want to leave with a feeling of love? 
somebody is so glad that you actually came into the room, right, as opposed to the opposite, remember that. He is with us always, always. And finally, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. In Psalm 25, 14, you know, what, what does uh, covenant is? It's simply an agreement between God and man. It's his promise, and it ties in perfectly, again, with this time. So in closing, I want you all to remember, true reverence and fear of the Lord can bring about wisdom, can bring about rescue. He can rescue us. He can restore us, brings about protection, brings about my favorite, peace, and life itself, right? Life on this earth, guys, is just too short without having any of these promises to cling to. And we can trust in the great I am. So I'm going to go all the way back to the conclusion. To truly trust God, one must fear and revere him. Amen? That is factual. And the greatest promise and the greatest gift of all is a heavenly life for all eternity. And it can be ours when we choose to trust him, when we choose to obey him. So Jesus died on that cross, we know. We also know that he rose again. Thank God he rose again and he lives. He lives. And listen, for those of you that maybe don't know Jesus, if you're watching online, anybody here in this church, right, whether it's staff, whether it's pastors, whether it's members, we're more than happy to talk with you, more than happy to pray with you and share the good news of Jesus with you. Believers, as you, as you come up to partake in the elements this morning, um, remember these words. I'm going to share the scripture with you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. We know that the juice represents the blood of Jesus poured out for us, and the cracker of bread represents his body sacrificed on the cross to take away our sins, our iniquities, and to heal every sickness that we have. Lord God, thank you for this message, Lord, of truth today, for reminding us of just how great and mighty and powerful you are, the great I am. We ask you to bless these elements, Lord, to our bodies as we remember all that you did and that you still do for us today. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Thank you all for allowing me to share today's message with you, and have a happy Mother's Day.
important you are and all your promises are yes and amen all your promises are yes and amen well good morning man what a great day I just wanted to share two things. I know my wife just shared that when you delight in the Lord, he gives you the desires of your heart and you're welcome. I know she delights in the Lord because he gave her me. So it's real. So keep praying. There's only one of me though, so sorry. No, we're so happy you came. Please have a great Mother's Day. Celebrate. And just, just love that we can trust in the Lord. And next week, we are back on Don't Drift. It is going to be an amazing series. We started it last week. We will continue on through May. Next week, Don't Drift. We're going to talk about standing firm. Love you guys. Have a great week. Truth is, thought I was stuck in this cycle.